How's it going everybody? Ad Ricker here, and I have VSDC free video editor pulled up on my computer right now. The last video I posted on my channel before this one was the one with a bunch of FPV freestyle drone footage and flight footage, and I edited the entire video with VSDC free video editor. Now, there's also a pro version. I didn't use the pro version, but I'm gonna give away 10 copies of the pro version in this video. All you gotta do is down below, comment hashtag VSDC and tell me what you like to edit, what kind of videos you like to make. I'm gonna pick one winner per week, so this is an ongoing two and a half month giveaway. It's gonna be awesome. Now the people at VSDC reached out to me and asked if I wanted to make a video, and this video is sponsored. So in that case, what I'm gonna be doing is a tutorial on how to use VSDC. If you wanna follow along, download the free software in the link below in the video description, and I'm just gonna do a basic edit with some cutting, some transitions, some text, um, and whatever else tickles my fancy as I go on. Right now, VSDC is only available for PC users, not Mac users. By the way, if you purchase or you win one of those pro license codes, you would input that here in the activation tab and go to activate and then input your license code. Back to projects. We're going to hit new project to start a new project. And project title, we're just going to say VSCC video t tutorial. Whoops. And then um, you can add some of this metadata stuff. I'm not going to. Resolution, we're going to select the resolution that we want to work with. Uh, today I'm using 1080, uh, 1920 by 1080 full HD clips, 16 by nine aspect ratio. Uh, if you're shooting or you're, you're editing 4K footage, obviously you'd pick one of these. Frame rate, I'm gonna be using 60 frame per second clips, but really they're 59.9 Four zero frames per second. Um, so if you do have a, a, an actual 60 FPS clip, you can use 60. Same with 30. Um, most clips are actually 29.970 frames per second. Anyway, 59.940. Make sure this all jives with what you did. Uh, frequency, stereo, uh, all that stuff. All right, blank project is what we're going to do and we're going to be importing some content. We're gonna be doing that once we get into the project. Finish. All right, here is our workspace and here's our timeline. If you've used other video editors, you know uh, this looks familiar. That This is a from left to right is beginning to end a timeline. So uh, at the beginning here is zero seconds into the video. And then about right here is one second into the video. And then way over here, it's five seconds into the video. So from left to right is from beginning to end of the video as we move along. And if we were to move this playhead, which is this red vertical line here, we move the playhead all the way to the beginning and we hit the play button or space bar, uh, it will play over time and it'll reach the end of the project and stop. So. Back to the beginning. Again, if you want to play, you can either hit the play pause button here, the red one, or you can use spacebar and start and stop that way. Now, before we do much else, I'm gonna teach you guys a trip that a trick. <laughs> I'm gonna teach you guys a trip. A trick that's gonna save you a lot of uh, heartache and headache. Up here in the upper right it says options. Click options and we're gonna to go to saving options and make sure that you automatically save the project every 10 minutes, five minutes, whatever makes sense for you. Default, it's on never, which means if you forget to save this thing and your computer crashes or the software crashes, you're losing all of your work. So every 10 minutes is what I usually use. You know, if I lose 10 minutes of work because my computer, you know, shut down unexpectedly, that's okay with me. Um, I'm gonna hit okay. The next thing we're gonna do is on the upper left, there's this little icon here, this blue floppy disk icon. It says save project. So I'm gonna save the project as, well, what I named it. I, I never actually picked a place for it when I first gave it a title though. So this is us officially saving the project for us to retrieve later on. I'm gonna go into my scratch disk where I save a lot of my vlog project files. I'm gonna save it right here. Same name, VSDC Video Tutorial. So, saved. 
Now, it says there are no items to show. That's not surprising because we don't have any footage in here yet. We got to import some footage to do anything. So upper left, add object. Click it, it drops down, and go ahead and add video. Now, I'm already pointed toward some clips that I've pre-selected here. Um, so if you had a, a bunch of clips and you wanted only a couple, you know, you can click one, you can hold the shift key on your keyboard and uh, select multiple, or like what I'm gonna do, cause I want all of these, I'm just gonna click once and drag across everything. Uh, so that's holding with the mouse button and just dragging across it all and then hit open. It's gonna take a second to add files to the project. Now here's where you can add some transitions right off the bat. Um, you can add like a, a fade or diffuse, a page turn. You can see what that might look like with this little preview window. And you can drag them into these spots in between each clip. So from left to right, we have garden, glass building, skyline, sunset, and tall building. These are the five clips that I just imported. I'm not gonna do any of that right now. I'd rather control that in the timeline rather than dropping them into these, you know, this, this, this uh, template wizard thing. So I'm just gonna hit apply settings, but I'm not gonna do anything. And now it says initializing sprite. What a sprite is in VSDC is sort of like its own little nested layer. If you uh, have worked with Premiere or some of these other video uh, editors that work with nesting clips, but regardless, you don't need to know about that right now. All we know is in this timeline, it says sprite, sprite one. So if we double click on sprite one, up comes five of our clips. And so for, from beginning to end, it's showing our garden, it's showing our glass building, it's showing our skyline, it's showing our sunset, and our tall building clips. Um, these are all taken with the Autel Evo, by the way. Uh, originally, they were shot in 4K, 60 frames a second. Um, however, I did convert them to regular uh, 1920 by 1080 HD just to make it run a little easier on my computer while I'm screen recording. Now, since the timeline runs from left to right, beginning to end of the video, that means that garden one here, if I were to move the playhead over it, is taking place first in the video, and then we're having the uh, glass building sunset taking place as the second clip in this video. Now, these clips are very long. Uh, this clip is about, what, a minute and a half long, the entire thing. I know I don't wanna use a minute and a half of me flying around this, this building. Now, the reason that these clips are all staggered, you know, kinda like a stair step, is because unlike Premiere and Final Cut, you cannot have more than one clip on one video layer. So you see how you have layers here? It says video, 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 video. Well, I cannot move the glass building clip up to the same layer as the garden clip. Also, uh, if I were to drag this down, so I wanna have garden on the bottom and glass building up here, it didn't really change anything. It's gonna play back the same way. However, if I scoot glass building over here, all of a sudden we're overlapping part of the garden clip. And if you move the playhead over to it, you can see part of the glass building clip is actually uh, going to be playing and it's being shown over the end of the garden clip because of this overlap. So uh, that, that's, that's a way to edit things if you want to is just overlap some clips with other clips. It's kind of a clunky way of doing it and we'll be doing some cutting and splicing in a few seconds or a few minutes here. But um, that is one of those things where if you have a clip over another clip, that top clip is going to be overriding and it's gonna be showing over it. Now I could reduce the opacity of this clip. If we were to click on composition mode up here in the properties window and then click on opacity and drag opacity down, we can start to see the garden layer up here. All right, opacity back up to 100% with the glass building sunset clip. Now I have a pretty big computer screen, but if you're having trouble seeing all of your video layers here, you can shrink the preview window a little bit and get a lot more of your timeline. Um, I don't need to do that. I'm gonna put it about right here. So I'm gonna move glass building back here and my garden appears again. And 
I'm going to find that part of the garden clip that I really like. So I, I want to, I like the greenhouse here and I want to use that. If I were to play right there, I, I'm hovering over the greenhouse. Okay, I'm backing up and then I think I do a flyover. Pretty sure right there. Yeah, I do a slow, it was really windy that day, you can tell. Um, I do a flyover and then I slightly pan up and right about there, I don't wanna, well, wrap right the bird, the, the bird is pretty cool. I don't wanna see when I turn, see how I turn? I'm gonna cut right before that. So I'm gonna move my playhead back right about there before the drone starts moving. So there are a couple ways to lop off the end of this clip. Uh, I could drag the right side of the clip by clicking on the very edge, and you can see my cursor moves from a pointer to this little double arrow line, and I can click and drag the end of that clip. That's, that, that's something that I can do if I wanted to. Or, and here we go, I'm gonna do the undo button. Go ahead and go to edit up here in the upper left and hit undo. We've just undid what we did, and uh, we can find another way to cut this thing. So uh, all I gotta do is highlight the clip and I can either click on the clip or drag across it, whatever. Dragging across allows you to select a bunch of clips at once, but we're only selecting this one. I'm gonna go back up to editor here on the top, or, uh, the top <laughs> up the upper left and cutting and splicing. We have split into parts or cut out fragment. Right here, if we split into parts this clip, right at the playhead, it's going to create two clips. Boom. And as you see, they're on their own video layers. So the clip I don't want is actually right here. The clip that I do want is right here. So I could click on this one and just like delete, right click and delete. Uh, I can also hit delete on my keyboard. I'm gonna do that right now. So delete on my keyboard, boom, goes away. So this clip, ends right there. Pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna stop with the, the, the space bar, move back to where I want this clip to begin. So I don't wanna have all this stuff. There's, there's a couple movements. I mean, that's a cool movement, but that's not really what I want. So let's find where I do want to start. I back up and as soon as I, Right there. So as soon as I start moving forward, I hit the space bar to stop playing, and that's where I want to uh, start the clip. Now, in Premiere and Final Cut and certain other video editors, you could click on this left side, just like we clicked on the right side to drag it to shorten it. However, in this video editor, that's not going to work. If we do that, it actually shifts the time of the clip. So I'm I'm moving the clip through space. That's not what we wanna do. That's not accomplishing what we want to do, which is to shorten the clip. So I'm going to make sure the clip is highlighted. Go go to editor up there, let's stay in editor. I only go to edit to, uh, to undo, but back in editor tab, and I'm gonna hit split into parts. Highlight that beginning part of the clip that we don't want and delete. Now, all that we have is the part of the clip that we do want, and it's only like 10, 15 seconds long. Very cool. Now, since we want this clip to play at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna drag it to the beginning of the timeline. If I didn't do that, we would have a bunch of dead black space right here before the clip starts in our video, and we don't want that. So back at the beginning, and then we go on to our second clip. Glass building, I'm not entirely sure what part of the video I wanna use here. It's such a cool building. Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna play and see. Oh yeah, my friend was flying his FPV quad, uh, and I caught it in the I'll Tell Evo video. Okay, this looks pretty cool. I remember trying to get a nice shot with the sunset. Again, it was kind of windy this day, so I'm bobbing around a little bit. Oh, and did you see the, the autosave just happened right there? It blipped on the screen. That means that I'm, I'm not gonna lose my work if this thing crashes. All right, that's a pretty cool shot. So before I spin the drone, you know, pretty abruptly to the left, I think I wanna use 
that flyby right beforehand. So I'm going to scoot backward right here, right as I start moving the drone closer to the building. Let's see. Let's see at what point I actually want the, the video to begin. Right about there. Okay. So I'm going to highlight the clip again. And now I'm going to teach you another way to shorten this clip. You see right here, right above the timeline, but below the playhead marker, uh, there are these two little brackets that uh, you can kind of move across and you, you're creating segments here. So if I create a segment right here, and then let's see where I wanted right right about there when I start moving the drone yeah so I have created a segment in the timeline with a clip selected which means that if I were to go up here and hit the scissor tool cut out fragment boom it just cut out that entire fragment of the clip and it starts right there where I wanted it to begin now I'm going to scrub through and find where I want it to stop right about there, right before I start turning. Okay, so I'm gonna click that. Um, I'm going to move my my segment selectors, I'm not sure what you call them, create a segment right about there, and I'm gonna cut out that segment too. So that's another way to, um, you know, cut out clips and, and organize things. Now just for organization's sake, I'm going to drag that clip right above and right next to the garden clip. And if we were to play the tail end of the garden clip and then watch the transition to the glass building clip. Ah, there is a, there's a small black blip. There's like a half a second of black screen between the first clip and the second clip. That means we have a little bit of dead space right here in between both clips where we haven't actually butted the one up against the other. So I'm going to click on uh, the first clip and I'm going to click on this little button, move cursor to block ending. So moving the cursor to block ending means that we've moved the playhead to the very end of this clip. It didn't look like it moved very much, but it did. Now that the timeline is there, the playhead is there, we're going to take this clip and s move it right up next to it. And you can actually see that as you move it, it kind of latches on. It snaps against it. It's a snappy sort of movement, and it stops right there. So now we know that we have a perfect seam right there between this clip, spacebar, and this clip. All right. Now we just got to do that for these other clips. So... Uh, Let's see, I'm gonna do this real quick. I like the skyline video. I'm just gonna get a couple seconds of this. That's, that, that's awesome, that looks awesome. Okay, so I'm only gonna use probably from here to maybe 10 seconds after this. Um, I'm gonna do a cut real quick and then right before I ascend, right there. So, I'm just gonna cut. So I did that pretty quick without explaining, but it's the same as what, what we did before. I'm going to delete the first part of that clip, the last part of that clip, and just save the good stuff. Again, I'm going to click on the last clip that I just butted up against the first clip. Boom. I'm going to hit the move cursor to block ending. Timeline or um, playhead moves to the very edge of this clip. Take this clip and butt it up right against that one. And move it down for organization. So we're gonna have this stair-stepping thing. Now, nothing's keeping us from having a clip, you know, way down here, or this clip, you know, right here, you know, and, and it just doesn't really matter what is where, as long as you're aware of what is overlapping what. So if you have a clip that's overlapping another one from top to bottom, obviously you know that you're gonna have one clip that's going to be playing over another one. Uh, so anyway, let's see, sunset. So this is descending sunset shot. I'm going to uh, raise the drone here, there we go. Yeah, I remember doing this. 
it's it's nice when you're editing footage you've also shot because you remember what you intended to do. Wow, that's a that's a beautiful sunset. I'm glad I stuck around for that one. Okay, and I stop right there. So I think I want to I think I want to cut the clip before I stop ascending. So I'm going to drag back the playhead just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to shorten up the beginning, and I'm going to start the clip right before. Right about there, right before the the trees reveal the sunset. So I'm going to split that clip, cut, drag, move cursor to beginning or to block ending of last clip, drag this right there. So there we go. That's the skyline into the sunset. Now, I'm not entirely convinced I want the sunset to be second from last. I almost feel like I want the sunset to be the last clip. Let's see this tall building video. Oh yeah, I remember doing this. I do a slow orbit around. Yeah, okay, this is where I want it to start. So I'm gonna cut out the beginning part of the clip and just use a few seconds of this. Again, it was windy that day, so I, I remember having some trouble keeping it centered. That's just my excuse, I guess. It was, it was windy that day. Oops. If you notice there, I actually had both clips selected, and so I was shortening both of them at the same time. Yeah. Uh, delete. All right. Sunset clip's going to be last. Glass building, or the first glass building, is going to be second to last. So I'm going to uh, make sure that this clip is butted up right against that one. And then make sure this clip is butted up right against that one. Uh, just to keep it organized, I'm going to also make it a complete stair step. Cool. Now to make things a little bit easier here, uh, right here above the timeline and to the left, you can set timeline scale. So I'm going to bring that up about halfway and you can see that we can see a little more of the clips and, and we can work a little bit more accurately. I could even bring it up more. Let's see, something like that. Yeah, that makes a little more sense. Now we can start affecting the clips. Uh, for instance, sunset, I feel like we could get that sunset to pop a little more. So I'm gonna double click on sunset and we go into the video timeline, like the actual clip timeline. So this is from beginning to end, the 23 second sunset ascension shot. That's all this timeline is. It doesn't include anything else. And this clip timeline is nested within the sprite that we just worked with. So video sunset uh, clip here, timeline here. I'm gonna go to video effects, adjustments, and I'm gonna go to hue, saturation, and lightness. I'm gonna select whole parent duration so this is going to be the entire duration of this clip. I'm going to hit OK. Up comes this yellow bar. So this is the entire clip. This yellow bar is the effect layer, if you will. On the right, you can see that we have our hue level, saturation, and lightness levels. If I were to drag about halfway through this clip so we can see the sunset, then mouse over to saturation and bring up saturation. Let's go, let's, let's go to 125%. So we got a lot more color coming out of this sunset. It looks a lot more radiant. We could actually go up to like 140, let's try that. Yeah, that, that red really comes out. That's, that's cool looking. Ooh boy. Oh, and then the sun as it peeks over. Video effects, adjustment. Brightness, contrast, and gamma. Let's try that. Whole parent duration. Click OK. And mouse over to halfway through the video. And brightness. Let's, let's take the brightness up a little bit here. Yeah, so that's, that's brightening the ground a little bit. And then maybe contrast down. We don't want to lose that awesome sky but just trying to bring up the ground just a little bit, you know? Now let's go back to our sprite. So we're mousing over, it says Sprite, Sprite 2. 
And let's see if we need to do anything else to any other things. Um, this one, that's pretty well exposed. I'm gonna leave that the way it is. This video, it, I think it's a little overexposed. I could have brought this down a little bit in the drone settings, but video effects, adjustments. And let's go brightness, contrast, gamma. Whole parent duration. So let's bring down brightness just a little bit. Let's go down minus 18. And contrast two. That looks pretty good. Yeah, this is all much better exposed. That was always going to be a little bright on the greenhouse. It's just, that's just how it's going to be. But yeah, this looks a lot better. Okay, back to the sprite. Now, we got to get some music in here, man. Like, it can't just have, you know, silent drone shots. So I'm going to add object audio. And I have this uh, song picked out already. I found it on uh, epidemicsound.com. Check the link in the video description for... Uh, a free 30-day trial to epidemicsound.com. Uh, let's see. From scene beginning is where I want to place it. So from scene beginning, that audio is going to be plopped in right there. I'm going to move the audio track down below just because that's how I'm used to seeing it, is, is having the audio play underneath the video. Now let's see what this sounds like. Okay, so the song is really chill. You know, it's calm, it's relaxing. I am seeing, however, that these clips are a little bit too long. Uh, I like to edit with clips moving by a little bit faster than that, and especially adding to the beat or editing to the beat of the music. So when we start at the beginning here, it's it's showing the garden. Before the, the music kicks into the first beat, with the snapping of the fingers, I kind of want to move on to the next clip. I'm going to take this clip right here with the tall building. That clip is already kind of short. I could probably start with that clip and move these over. And let's see. Right about there is where I want to cut that clip. So I'm going to, and, I, and you can you can hear how I slammed on the uh, space bar of my keyboard to find where I wanted to stop, kind of on, on the beat of the song. Now I'm going to take the right side of that clip and just drag it. So this is what we have so far. Now let's add that garden footage in. Gonna click on the last clip. We're gonna click on move cursor to block ending. Drag garden up to the very edge of it and play. Yeah, so this clip makes a little more sense to really play out longer. And, and space bar right there on the beat. Kind of like at the very end of that measure of the song. And then we will play, we'll, we'll see the glass building. Yeah. Okay, so I'm seeing that I want to cut a, a little more of the glass building clip off because when I'm just hovering here, just starting my movement, Start it right there, right there. So, gonna split that clip, delete the first part of it, click garden, move cursor, drag clip, play. Spacebar. 
<laughs> so a lot of what I do is 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 dependent of the beat of the song, you know? And then we'll get that skyline in there. So move in the skyline. Ooh, you hear the beat? If this video was a lot longer, if we had like a lot more footage, I, I could edit this entire song. But here's our sunset as the beat kicks in. Let's play it up. Boom, right there. I'm gonna lengthen it just a hair. And then I'm gonna drag uh, the edge of the audio the, the instrumental song way back here to the very end of the, the video. So this video is only a, a minute long, um, so very manageable. Now what we got to do is do a fade in and fade out. I really want to uh, get some fade in and fade, fade outs for the song as well as for the video. So I'm going to take my first clip here, Tall Building. I'm going to double click on it. And now we're in the clip uh, you know, man manipulation timeline, whatever you want to call it, uh, move the, the playhead all the way to the beginning. And in editor, here in the editor tab, I'm going to video effects and transparency and fade in and fade out. So fade, well, for here, the, for this clip, it's just fade in. So we're fading from black to the clip. So fade in from scene beginning. So at the beginning of the clip or the scene, uh, it has this yellow fade bar. And so from the beginning, it's black. And from the end, if we just drag a little bit, you can see it's, it's brightening up as we go toward the end of it. And by here, we see all the video. Now, we go back to our sprite. We click on our last clip, which is the sunset. Double click. We also have these little modifiers here, which is the, um, the brightness, contrast and gamma and the hue saturation and lightness layers here well we're going to go to add a, or a video effects transparency and fade out so this is the last clip of the video which means we want to fade out to black from it so fade out to black to scene end Boom. So we have this little fade out. And we can adjust that too. And I know, I just know I'm going to want to have a lazier fade out. So here's a pretty quick fade out. Too quick for my taste. I want to drag this fade out like, let's go eight seconds worth of, or it's nine almost seconds worth of fade out. I love slow fade outs in comparison to the standard fade out length that, you know, these programs default to. So now we have a fade out. We're going to we're going to also fade out the music. I'm going to double click on body of water instrumental. Boom. I'm going to audio effects and fade in and fade out. So, it's one track for the entire video, one audio track. So I can fade in and fade out on the same track. Fade in from scene beginning. Okay? And then we're gonna do it again, amplitude, audio effects, amplitude, fade out to scene end. Boom. We're also gonna to want to give that fade out a little bit more of a length to it like we did with the, the video. Let's see how that sounds fading out. So the audio is fading out slowly. And the video is fading out, nice. I think I want to add some titles. Now, I honestly, I probably wouldn't add a title if this was just me putting out this video, um, but I want to show you how to make a title. Uh, I'm going to go back to editor up on the, on the upper left, and I'm going to go add object, text, and text. So we're going to find a place to put it uh, from cursor position. Sure, why not? So it's going to be placed right here at the playhead. I don't know what to type. <laughs> I'll put this in the, the lower left corner here. We're going to drag a little text box. And I'm going to put it about right there. So we're going to click inside of this text box. And we're going to type. 
So type, type, type. Now we're going to highlight that text and we can find a bunch of stuff to do. So let's do black color. So that's black type. We're gonna to go to my favorite font that I use for most of my videos, Franklin Gothic Heavy. There we go. Now I can click out of that text box and then select the text and now I can move the text. So I can move that wherever I want to. I can center up the text in that box and make it a little easier to center up in the video if I wanted to. And that's how you can add some stuff. Now, if I want to fade in that text or fade it out, obviously we would do that again. So video effects, transparency, fade in from scene beginning. Now I can shorten that text because it's way too long. Shorten it about there. We'll double click again and we're gonna do a fade out right here. So transparency fade out to scene end. There we go. So now, so now it fades out. And honestly, that is about all I did. The, the, the cutting, the slight color correction, the addition of music and the addition of text. That's pretty much all I do in most videos. There are a ton of other things you can do with this pro program and I'm not going to get into all of them, but obviously it's very powerful and especially with the free version, I don't really know how they can supply the free version that does so much um, when it's, uh, it's just a really powerful program. Now it's not the uh, most stable in some situations. There have been a few times where this thing has crashed. And that's why I say, make sure you have that autosave function to at least 10 minutes, if, if not quicker, if not, if not uh, less time between saves. So the video is, let's just say it's completed. I think it is. Now I'm going to expand this timeline to see what I'm doing a little bit and drag our little segment markers from beginning to the end of the video, right about there. So now we have an entire segment on our sprite from beginning to end. So now we're gonna go to export, export project. Here we can select a couple different things. Um, I usually do H.264 uh, for most of my video uploads. It's just what I've always done. H.264 is great for YouTube and that type of thing. Highest quality, you have some options, but highest, you know, why not? Let's do as high as we can go. By the way, H.264 is one of a couple ones. Um, MPEG, I have not always had good luck with with this program. H.264, I've always had good luck. So let's do H.264, highest uh, quality. Output file, we're gonna, we're gonna actually change the name. We're gonna find a place to put this thing. So I'm gonna go to my vlog exports and I'm just gonna say VSDC video tutorial, save. And I'm going to then export. So you go ahead and hit export once you're ready up here in the, the top in the middle of the screen. Uh, just make sure all this is good, by the way. Ten, you know, 1920 by 1080, uh, roughly 60 frames per second. Um, that's just how it's all going to look, and we're going to spit it out. So, export project. It's going to take a couple minutes. I mean, let it let it run. Make sure that you have this preview window on so you see what it's doing, and you can tell if it's still working or if it got hung up or something. And then once this is done, you can open it up on your hard drive and you can play it back. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comment below. I'm not a master at VSDC Free Video Editor, but uh, maybe I can help you. Uh, maybe someone else can as well, so chime in if you know the answer and you're in the comments. Thank you to VSDC for sponsoring this video. Again, comment hashtag VSDC down below and tell me what kind of videos you like to edit or you intend to edit. Maybe you've never edited before and this is your first video editing software. That'd be pretty cool. So what kind of videos do you hope to make? Regardless, comment below and you're going to be entered to win one pro license per week. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy editing.